So we're back in the studio. We're back in the studio. We have all the parts with us. We're about to build it, but I'm not gonna be the one to build it. It's gonna be Kim, which she has no idea about. So I'm gonna guide her step by step. She's gonna build the PC herself. It's her first time. I'm gonna have my hands behind my back. This is to show you guys that anybody can build a PC even if you're a complete beginner. So, yeah. Shh. One hour later. Hey guys, this is Kim. And Joey. This is part two of our new PC build series. So yeah, we have all the parts. We have all the parts here. And Joey is gonna give you a full tutorial on how to build a new PC. But actually, in the last video, there's something I didn't tell you. The viewers already know this, but you're the only one who doesn't know it. Okay. You're gonna be the one to build the PC. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Do you know how to build a PC? I'll build a person if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever built a PC before? Yeah. Not exactly, like just the CPU, but it's already like mostly intact. Have you ever put together a PC from scratch before? Mm -hmm. So Kim is a complete beginner. It's to show you guys that even anybody with no experience at all can do it with some proper guidance. So let's begin. Let's f <laughs> no, we're not gonna f this up. <laughs> so many bleeps already in post. <laughs> Alright, let's start. Let's do it. So the things you need to build a PC are number one, a static free surface. Like here we have this wooden table, no static there. Two, you need lots of patience. And three, so I'm the wrong person <laughs> to do this. Three, you need a bunch of common sense. And what do you think the fourth one is? What do you think the fourth one is? A screwdriver. You know? <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> it's a screwdriver. You need a you need a Phillips head screwdriver. One big one and one small one. Okay. That's not even big. Whatever. So step one of any PC build is to make sure all your parts are complete. For step two, what you will need is motherboard, motherboard. your CPU, the processor, and your RAM. So here we have the. Asus ROG Strix Z370E gaming motherboard. We have the Intel Core i7-8700K overclockable processor. And we have 32 gigs of T-Force DDR4 Nighthawk RGB RAM. We got these specifically because they're Asus Aura compatible. Because we love that RGB. We love, we love that, that RGB. We love those lights. So first, we take the motherboard out of the box. We do the honors. So step two is to take your motherboard out of the box and put it on an anti-static surface. A lot of people like putting it on top of the anti-static bag, but the outside of the bag is actually made of metal. Inside the bag is anti-static, outside, outside is it's kind of dangerous. So the best place to put it is either on the table or on top of the cardboard box. I know something. Next step is to <laughs> unbox the processor. Okay, so in the box, once you open it, the first thing you might see is the sticker, the i7 sticker. You guys might want to save this and put it on your case. We have the processor itself. If there is one particular part in the whole PC that you should take extra care with, it's this one. Which is why, for your first time, we're going to demonstrate to our viewers that you don't have to be scared. All you have to do is be careful and be patient. So on the motherboard, in the upper middle, we have what's called the CPU socket. We have a plastic cover and a retention arm. What you're gonna do, Kim, is you push down that retention arm, push down, and to the right. Undo it. There you go. Lift. Okay. You will see on the cover, closely, 
but there's a triangle in one of the corners. And the CPU itself also has a triangle in one of the corners. So that's the orientation you put it in. Take the CPU, grasp it by the sides. Don't touch any metal parts. Now very carefully, we put it down into the socket. Straight down without bending any pins. Just gently, very gently, just like that, okay? Now you push down the socket, yeah? Make sure it's lined up. And you put back the arm where it was earlier. It'll take some force, but that's really how it is. Okay, now plastic cover pops off. Now our CPU is installed. Good job, okay? Do you really think it's my first time? Is that scary? No. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she's not really a person that gets scared of things. But to a lot of people, this is really scary. The first time I did this, I was scared as hell. <laughs> Oftentimes, the CPU is the most expensive part of the entire build. Okay, so after you've installed the CPU, you can move on to the RAM. So our motherboard here has four, four. slots. And we also have four, four sticks. So here in our build, we're using a total of 4 sticks of 8 gigs each to make for a total of 32. But, you, some of you guys might be having a 16 gig RAM build, which means you're only gonna populate 2 RAM slots. So you have to consult your motherboard manual on which slots to use if you're using only 2. The way you install the RAM is you have to identify which of these sides has the notch that moves. Push. So you push them all down. Insert them evenly on both sides. Now DDR4 RAM can only be installed one way. So there's really no way to screw this up. Do that, line it up, and push down. Okay, there. Number two. Alright. So we have all four RAM sticks installed. We have 32 gigs. And that concludes phase one. Phase two, we get, guess what it is? What's next? <laughs> Guess what part is next? How would I know? So phase two is the case. That's what I meant! A few moments later. So for our case, we have this huge box here. This huge red box. This is the huge box. This is the... <laughs> this is the NZXT Noctis. 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 This is the NZXT Noctis 24... 450. 2450. No, it's <laughs> This is the NZXT Noctis 450 oh, ROG, ROG edition. Say that again. Noctis, 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 4, 450. Noctis 450 ROG edition. Republic of Gamers. Republic of Gamers. Republic of Gamers. Okay, so gamers. if you've never opened a case before, this is the best way to do it. So you cut the tape on top and you don't open it like this. You don't take it out yet. I actually need to flip it over. <laughs> Pull up. Ah, the light! <laughs> Shoot that. <laughs> okay. Screw it. <laughs> Our case here is pretty aerodynamic looking. It's got that ROG feel, feel on it. the side. We have a clear side panel. We're gonna remove this at the very end. So what you need to do once you have your case out of the box is remove both side, side. panels. Okay. Okay. So your case will come with its uh, some of its hardware. So once you remove the side panels, you're gonna find that your case has all of its hardware hidden in a little box, usually in the drive bay area. This box contains pretty much all the screws and cables you need to install your components inside. Inside this box, you're gonna find some zip ties and different types of screws, which you cannot mix up. They are for different parts that you're gonna install. So the first screw type we need is the M3. These are the screws for the motherboard. As we can see in our motherboard, we have different holes. We have to match those holes with the standoffs installed in the motherboard. Sometimes you guys will have to install your own standoffs, but this particular case has to be pre-installed. So what you're going to do is identify the standoff that's in the middle. So step one of phase two is to go back inside your motherboard box. You can hold this very carefully. Go back into your motherboard box and find the I.O. shield. Yeah? You see 
that. You see that hole there, that square hole. Push it out from the inside. Push it out. Yeah. So next, remember that middle standoff we talked about earlier? We're gonna lower the motherboard onto the middle standoff here. And that's gonna be the anchor point to make our little adjustments. So basically, you have to make sure the ports of the motherboard over here at the back yes. line up with the IO shield and all the standoffs line up. Okay? Kim has successfully put the motherboard down to the standoffs. Good job. The holes are all lined up with the ports, and each screw hole on the motherboard is lined up with the standoff. So now that our motherboard has been lowered into the case, it's lined up with all the standoffs, it's lined up with the I.O. shield, all the ports are lined up with the I.O. shield. Next, now it's time to screw it in. So your case will come with different types of screws. You're gonna have typically M3 screws and 632 screws. Now your motherboard standoffs might be compatible with either of these. Ours happens to be the 632 screws, but be sure to check your manual for which one to use. So while Kim is working on the case, side note, expert tip, well, it's really more common sense. You don't really want to mix up these different screw types, okay? Be, take sure to take note of that. If you have like a parts organizer or something, that would be great, but just keeping them in their respective Ziplocs is enough. Don't be idiots like us, this one's not magnetic. The small one's magnetic, magnetic. but, but the big one is not magnetic. So we so just use this to like... To lower the screws, lower the screws and, this one and this one to, one to tighten it up. So don't be an idiot like us. Use magnetic tip screwdrivers. All your screwdrivers should be magnetic tip. There's no reason they should be magnetic tip. So now all the screws are installed in the motherboard. The motherboard is now secure, be in place. Okay, so to recap, we've installed the CPU and the RAM and the motherboard. And we've installed the motherboard in the case. So the next step inside the case is the power supply. So here we have the Corsair HX1200 fully modular power supply and let's begin. Flight! Okay, so I said this is a fully modular power supply. So when you take a look at the unit itself, we have ports. We have ports instead of just cables dangling out because all the cables are here in this little pouch Corsair has provided for us. So what this lets us do is only plug in the cables we need so we don't have all that extra bulk which helps a lot with cable management. So now what we need from the modular power supply cables are the 24 pin, which is for the motherboard. We need the 8 pin for the CPU, two SATA power for our hard drives and SSD, and we need two more 8 pins for our graphics card. And here's the... It's a thick power cable. <laughs> okay, we'll set this aside for later. And don't be idiots like us. Clean as you go. Don't just throw your boxes on the side like us. <laughs> so the first thing we do with the modular power supply is plug in all the cables. So now that your cables are plugged into the power supply, next thing you need to do is here in the case, you have this bracket for the power supply, so this screws onto the back. Once you have the bracket unscrewed from the case, you're gonna see you have four spots for screws. Now this goes onto the back of the power supply. Now with your case, you're usually gonna have special screws just for that purpose. So take all these cables neatly and put them through here and out the big. Okay. So this power supply has a fan on one side. For this build, we're gonna have it on the bottom so it doesn't interfere with the rest of the case's airflow. So it's just blowing here and in the chamber, it's just doing its own thing as its own airflow. Okay, 
Okay, so the power supply is inside the case now. Next, we have to connect all the cables we have into the motherboard. And this is where cable management comes in, my friends. Are you ready for some cable management? It's the funnest part of PC building. Can you be more enthusiastic? <laughs> <laughs> so in the case, you're gonna see these rubber grommets. This is where you're gonna pass through the cables from the power supply and the rest of the case. So when doing cable management, you always want to start with the biggest cables. So that's the big 24 pin over there. You want to pass it through the grommet that's nearest where it will end up being connected. In that case, the 24 pin goes here. So it's best if we pass it through the middle. Yeah. Now connect it to the 24 pin on the, on the inside. Right. In. Next, you look for the cable labeled CPU. That one, you have to go to the bottom and up here. Okay. So after connecting the 24 pin ATX cable and the 8 pin CPU cable, the next things we have to connect are the fans and the front I.O. So here on the back, Actually on the back here, as you can see, our case comes with a built-in fan hub. This cable for the PWM control. This one, that's USB 3 or USB 3.1, I'm not sure. These are the for the audio ports. This one is the power button. This one is for the built-in RGB LEDs. Our motherboard does have an RGB header, so these are the built-in strips of the case. So this plugs in straight into the motherboard. So for these front panel connectors, it's always important to consult your motherboard manual to see where actually you're going to plug all these cables in. So starting with the power switch cable, I'm going to feed this through here. Next is the USB 3 header. So we're done with most of our cables and pretty much all of our front panel I.O. So next up is to install the CPU cooler. Yeah. So some of you might be judging us. We installed the power supply before the CPU cooler, but hang on. The reason why we did that is because we don't want any of the tubing or the cooler itself or the radiator to interfere with our cable plugging later on. So it's just easier for us that way to deal with it. So here for our CPU cooler, we have the Asus ROG Ryuo. Is that how you say it? Ryuo. Ryuo. It's a 240mm. Ryuo. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a all-in-one liquid cooler, 240mm radiator. And yeah, so let's take it out of the box and install it. A few moments later. Based on our case layout, the radiator is going to have to be here. So for this... I think we need to remove this top part of our case. Okay, that's gonna vary depending on your case, but for ours, that's how we remove the front. And it's also gonna vary how you install your radiators. It might be in the front, it might be on top, so it just varies, okay? So aside from the radiator placement on your case, what's also gonna vary from CPU cooler to CPU cooler is how this thing actually mounts on your CPU and on your motherboard. So in this case, this is going to be in the case of the ROG Rio 240. So if you have a different cooler, just refer to your manual. So ours has, it's a 240mm radiator. We have two fans, obviously. We have the mounting bracket and we have the cooler itself. Ours already has thermal paste applied. This is all you need. So inside this plastic bag here, we have a cable. I presume this is for the RGB lighting. We have a Intel backplate. Oh, this is the AMD mounting bracket. We don't need this. We need this. So the Intel mounting bracket is already installed on the cooler itself. Okay, so when you're installing an all-in-one liquid cooler, your kit will come with a backplate. That's the first thing you need to install first. So okay. through the back of the motherboard, line up the four holes. So the backplate is installed. Next, we have these four uh, standoffs. Okay, so for these standoffs, you just want them to be, you want them to be tight, not too tight, just really secure. Finger tight is enough. The next step here would usually be putting on the actual cooler. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mount our radiator already. So since our radiator is mounted on top, usually it would have been on the bottom, but we run into some clearance issues. 
It won't fit basically. That's why we have to put the radiator on top. Therefore, we can't use these screws and washers to secure it through here. So what we're gonna do is Easy have fans. the fans here. The case will be sandwiched between the radiator and the fan. We're gonna install them as a exhaust, which means so we have three fans here in front as an intake, one exhaust fan at the back, and two exhausting from the radiator. So we have basically equal airflow. Three fans sucking air in and three fans blowing air out. That's equal air pressure. You want it to be a little bit on the positive side, which means a little bit more intake than exhaust, but equal air pressure is also good. You just don't want it to be negative. Negative means you have less air being sucked in, more air being sucked out. What that does is it introduces a lot more dust into your system. All right, so let's install the fans. For the fans, you're gonna find these long screws. So you thread them through the fan and screw them into the radiator. When you're installing fans or anything with four screw holes on each corner, it's better to do it diagonally. Like yes, so, this, 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 and this. I don't know if you guys understood that, but, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have the radiator and the fans installed. What we, What's left to do now is to actually mount the cooler on the CPU. We have the back plate, we have the standoffs. All we have to do now is flip the case on the side. It's, it's easier this way, trust me. We're gonna mount it this way. Lower it onto the standoffs. Now to secure it, we have these four Oh wait, what I said earlier about the screwing in uh, an X pattern, it's important here. So you're not gonna do one side, then do the other, then do the rest. You wanna do two at a time, evenly, a little bit. Then move to the other two, and back, 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 until everything is screwed in totally. So you wanna do a little bit, a little bit, yeah. So now it's finger tight now. You screwed it in evenly. Now, just for good measure, so that the cooler has decent contact with the CPU, you just do maybe half a turn with the screwdriver. Not too tight, just a little bit. So that's all good. Our CPU cooler is now mounted, but we have to connect it. So, we have four connectors here. We have one. SATA power. We have one. This is for the actual pump of the cooler. This plugs into the motherboard. And we have this extension so the fans can plug directly here. So these radiator fans can plug here. So actually, let's let's route the fan header to the back with the hole. So the dual fan header coming from the CPU water block is in the back. So what we have to do is run the fan cables to the back and connect these two. And then our cooler actually comes with this cable, okay. micro, micro USB, USB to USB header. So I think this the micro USB plug is here. Cable connects to the header for the CPU pump, actually. So we find that I think what you should do is like wrap it around the cooler maybe once. And lastly, for the CPU cooler, we have the SATA power. So this will plug into one of the power supply cables. What do you think? Should we route it on the side or on top? Or the side. Okay guys, so that completes our installation of the CPU cooler. <laughs> Are you tired already? She's tired already. We haven't even begun. <laughs> actually already utilized the SATA power. So another thing that SATA pertains to is the hard drive. So we're in the second to the last step. For hard drives, we have two. We have a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda for mass storage. And for SSD, we have a 250 gigabyte T-Force RGB SSD. So as if we didn't have enough RGB components yet, even our SSD is it's RGB. That Asus Aura Sync support. You can't get enough of RGBs in your life, can you? Our case actually has one, two, three, four, five, and I think there's a sixth one down there. A six 3.5 inch hard drive base. Let's use the bottom most one. So, can you unscrew the tray? Bam, bam. This goes up here. 
The hard drive has four screw holes in the bottom, and correspondingly, it has one, two, three, four line up here. So, I'm gonna slide it in, and then use these screws. These came from the box with the case, so again, don't lose your screws, guys. And earlier, I said we need a big screwdriver and a small screwdriver. We need a small screwdriver for things like this. Go ahead, slide it back into the bay. And yeah, so for a case like this, that's how you install a hard drive in the bay. So a hard drive like this, a SATA hard drive, it has two connectors. You have a power connector, like the one we showed you earlier, and you have a SATA connector. So that's SATA power and SATA data. So the SATA power, obviously power, connects to the power supply, and the data one connects to the motherboard. That's what sends the data back and forth between your drive and the computer. And where do you get the SATA cable? Alright, so your motherboard box will have a bunch of included SATA cables, usually two or three, and sometimes four. Okay, so look at this. We have two different SATA cables here. We have one where both ends are straight, and we have one where one end is straight and the other one is angled. Now, since this one is sitting in a bay, if we were to use a straight one here, like that, this might conflict with the case closing, right? So instead, we use the angled one, like so. Route it through maybe here. Now, the front of the case, looking into the motherboard. As we can see, the SATA connectors are here. So we'll just connect this into one of these. Go in the back. The connector is in the shape of a nail. There. Okay, moving again to the back of the case. So the SATA data connector is connected to the motherboard already. Now we need power. So taking the same SATA cable we use for the cooler, it has more connectors actually. It has one, two, three, four. Let's plug in this one. Okay. So here's a pro tip for you guys. So you see we have all this extra dangling SATA power cable, but we have so many unused drive bays. What you can do to hide extra cable is to just actually use the drive bay. And next up is our SSD. Oh. This cable is what will make it RGB. <laughs> yeah! And let's plug in the SATA. So where we're planning to put this SSD, since this case features it, we have two bays here and here on top of the power supply basement, which lets you show off your SSD. Good for us because ours is actually RGB. So it's only one screw. It's one screw over there. Same thing with the 3.5 inch hard drive. Just drop that on the bay, screw. And again, guys, some of your components will have their own stickers. So if you want to put those in front of your case, make sure to save them. So if you guys remember from the power supply installation, we had two SATA power connectors because I knew that we would need another extra one to reach the SSD area. So I'm gonna feed that through here. So we have SATA power and you can, you can pass those cables behind you. Okay. So SATA power is connected. So SATA power is connected, now it's connected to SATA data. We have the same hole over here. We have this header here for the micro USB. I'm gonna connect this to the fan hub actually at the back. So just a quick recap. <laughs> so our drives are done. A quick recap, we have the CPU and the RAM and the motherboard. We have the motherboard in the case. We have the power supply connecting everything together. We have the CPU cooler mounted on the case and the CPU. And we have our drives installed. So, what do you guys think is next? What do you think is next? Did you forget about RTX? <laughs> now it's time to install our GeForce RTX 2080 from Asus ROG. Pam! 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 Okay. So this is the real heart of our build. Ba bam. Bada boom. Bada boom. Bada bing. Bada bing. Bada bing. Bada bing. How thick that thing is. God. <laughs> okay, Kim. 
before actually installing the graphics card, we need to do some prep work. You see these screws here? Mm -hmm. You need to remove the top one and the bottom one. Comes off with your expansion card covers. Not yet, not yet, not yet. One last thing, you'll have one leftover cable from the power supply. So there's actually a dedicated area for it to go. So there's a hole here. Okay. To install a graphics card, your motherboard will have PCI Express slots, latches. You want to make sure that it's clear of anything in the way. When you install a graphics card, it just goes straight in. And if it's really successful, you might even hear a click. Go ahead, be careful, it's heavy. So the graphics card is installed, it's fully pushed into the slot, we have the power cable connected. All we need now is to put back the screws from the PCIe slot covers. Okay, so at this point, every component has been installed in our case. If you wanted to, you could just leave it like this and turn it on. <laughs> but we're actually gonna do that now. But just for testing, just to be sure that the thing actually works. The moment the of truth. The moment of truth, your first PC build, turn on the power supply, turn on the power, and let's see if it boosts. Drum roll! Drum roll! <laughs> and do the others. It's lighting up, it's a good sign. So up the monitor. Ooh, those lights! Wait for the B-roll guys. Wait for the B-roll of everything set up. All the lights, our Asus Aura sync. <laughs> Wait for it. Okay, and we posted! <laughs> <laughs> your first PC build is successful. You just built your very first PC. <laughs> yes. Your girl can build. Alright, so... At this point, we know the PC works, we can turn it off. And all that's left to do is to put back all the panels, manage the cables, and we're good to go. So, without any further ado, here's some <laughs> sexy B-roll montage. Alright, so our PC is built. I and hope it's working. And it's working. Yeah. So I hope you guys <laughs> learned something. I'm I pretty did. sure Kim learned a lot. This is her first time building a PC and she succeeded. Like it was mostly you. I just told you what to do, right? We did all of it basically. Oh my god. It was so satisfying. Seeing it turn or seeing it come to life. Oh my god. Yeah, so as a beginner, can you tell our audience that if you can do it, so can they? Well, yeah. How do you do it? I don't think you would do it. You can't do it. Joking. <laughs> but yeah, if I can do it, you can do it too. It's just, you just like, need... you just need confidence and don't... Well, yeah, so like... in, the, in the beginning, I said what you need to build a PC was non-static surface, screwdriver, patience, common sense, and I think you mentioned an important one. You need confidence also. When you're yeah. dropping that CPU in the socket, you need to be confident that you're mm -hmm. doing it correctly. Yeah. Because if you think that you're doing it wrong, then there's a big chance that you'll do it wrong. All I did was like, think that I can do it. And I did. We want to say thank you to JDM once again. Big shout again. out. Big shout out to you guys for helping us find all the parts that we need. And um, if you guys need PC parts, go to them. They're the best. Like... They've helped us a lot. Yeah, we'll have their Facebook page linked down in the description below. So guys, this is actually a three-part series. Part one is you know sourcing the parts from JDM. Part two, this is Building. the build guide. And part three is actually where we're gonna test, test and benchmark this PC. 
We're gonna use some standards like 3D Mark, the new games. We have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We have Black Ops. We have all the heavy games to test. But if you have a particular game or benchmark let that you want know. us to test, let In us know. Down below. All right. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And hit the, and bell, hit icon. the bell icon to get notified of our future uploads. All right. So I hope you guys learned something. This has been Joey. And this is Kim. And we'll see, see you, you in the next, in the next one. Bye.